Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about round robins. So round robins uh, basically means you have multiple samples triggered by the same key and usually at the same velocity as well. So you press a key once and it triggers a sample, you press the same key again it triggers a different sample. And you'd usually use this for creating variations to add a bit more realism so you'd record a, a particular sample on an instrument multiple times, you get to do multiple takes of that sample and you map it to the same key and then every time it's played you get a slight variation which is a little more realistic. There are other uses for round robin as well but that's the main uh, purpose, that's, that's how it's most commonly used. So I've just got a highs project here, I've got a single sampler, I've got an interface script but there's nothing inside there, it's just empty. And here's the project folder, we've got some samples and these are just um, Th these samples are someone counting from one to four. Um, it's 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 in German, which I just thought was more interesting. I, th I think it's a synthesized voice, and I just found these on uh, freesound.org. I'll put a link in the YouTube description to uh, this original file. So if I ju just drag these across, we'll just have a quick listen. Let's just zoom in a bit there. So I'll put those. Yeah, that's fine. Ein, zwei, drei, vier. I chose these samples so that we could distinguish between each sample when we're testing because if we use real round robin samples it can be a bit hard to distinguish between them so I thought this would be a bit clearer for the purposes of demonstration. Now there's multiple ways to handle round robins in highs. Uh, most of them involve scripting but the scripting is fairly simple. However there is a built-in method of round robin as well, which does a sequential round robin, so it'll play the first sample, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and then back to the first. So that's the one we're going to look at initially. If we go into sampler settings, over here we can see there's this thing called RR groups, uh, that stands for round robin groups. Now you don't have to use them for round robins, they're generic groups, you can use them for all kinds of things, but in the default state they automatically do a sequential round robin. If we go into the Wave uh, Sampler workspace, again I'll zoom in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stack all of these notes, onto all these samples onto middle C. So it's now a little hard to edit them in the mapping editor independently, but we can access them over here in the table view. So if we click on the second sample here, we can see that the RR group is set to 1. And down here, we can change the RR group by clicking this button, but at the moment it doesn't do anything. So let's go back to this view. The reason it doesn't do anything is because RR groups here is set to 1. So we only have one group. So let's change that to 4, one for each of our samples. And now we can go back to the sampler workspace. And now if I try and change this number, it should work. There we go. So now we can see that the second sample is now in RR group 2. And then we'll put the third one into RR group 3. And the last one into RR group 4. And we've got this display group option here. So we can see there's one sample in group 1, one sample in group 2, one in group 3, and one in group 4. And if I select it, all samples, it's just going to show all of them together. And now if I play uh, C, what is it, middle C, it's going to play through each of the samples. So the only key I'm going to press is middle C. So that's a really basic round robin. It's the default behavior, no scripting required. But it is very basic and it also means that you now can't use these groups for anything else because they're doing round robin. So now let's look at some other ways we can handle this. So we're going to add a script. Now, when you do your round robin scripting, don't put it in your interface script. The interface script should always have deferred callbacks because it's going to run in the non-real time thread. But round robin stuff, that's generally going to be real time because you want it to respond as the user presses a key. So add a separate script for handling real time stuff and specifically for the round robin. So we'll add a new script. And we're going to call this round robin, call it round robin one because we might do separate scripts or I might incorporate everything in here. We'll see how we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to tell highs to not do this automatic behavior. We need to tell it that we're going to handle the round robins ourselves. So we're going to get a reference to the sampler. 
So I'm just right clicking and then I go create generic script reference. Actually, we'll go create typed sampler script reference. That's added to the clipboard. So now we'll just paste it into our script. And now we'll go into the script editor. And if we search over here in the API collection, just type round there and we can see there's this function here, enable round robin. If I right click on there, we can see it expects a Boolean value. So that's what we use to disable or enable the round robin. So we're going to go sampler one dot enable round robin and just set that to false. And I'll hit F5 on there. So now if I hit middle C, it's just going to play the first group. I'm and let me turn that down a little. And if I hit it again, it's going to do the same. It's only going to play the first group. I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay, so now let's just recreate that behavior that we had originally with the default round robin, but we'll recreate it in scripting just to see how that's done. So we're going to need a counter to keep track of which group we want to enable. So we'll make a variable, we'll make it a reg variable because it's going to be used in real time. I'll just call it counter and we'll set it to zero. Then we'll go to our on note callback, our on note on callback. And every time a note is pressed, we're going to increase that counter. So the counter plus plus. And let's just see that in the console just so we can make sure that's working. So if we watch down here in the console. So we can see it counts up, but it just keeps going and going and going and going. We need it to reset when it reaches, um, in our case, it's going to be three because we're going to count from zero to three. So one way you could do that and how I used to do it in the beginning was I'd put an if statement and I'd say if counter was equal to three, then counter equals zero. And that's, that's one way you can do it. And if we print that out, We should see that down here. So I'm only counting three numbers there, but you get the idea. But that's that's one way to do it, but it's not very elegant. So we'll use a different way. We're going to use the modulo operator. So we're going to write counter equals, and then we're going to put parenthesis and counter plus one, and then the percent sign, which is for modulo, and our upper value, which is three. And let's just see that printing in the console again. And I've done the same thing again. The upper value should be four, not three. Let's change that. There we go, zero, one, two, three. So we get four values. So what's happening here is we're adding one to the counter, so we're incrementing the value, and then we're performing this modulo operation. And what that does is it basically divides the number and gives us the remainder. And the result is it loops back around to zero. So that's perfect for what we want. So now we have a counter that's going from zero to three. All we have to do is tell highs which group we want to enable. So if we go back to our API collection, typing group, we can see there's a few functions here with the word group in. We're looking for this one, set active group. And you can see it takes a group index and the index is important is one based. So it doesn't start from zero, it starts from one. So that means we have to add one to our counter because our counter does start from zero. So we're gonna go sampler one dot set active group. Give it the counter value and add one. Hit F5 on there. And now if we go back to here, hopefully this will work. We should be back with the original behavior we had that was automatic from highs. So that works nicely. One advantage of doing it this way is now we can use the groups for other things as well. And um, we don't we don't have to use the whole key range for the round robin. For example, you could put in a key filter so that only certain notes have the round robin effect and other notes don't have a round robin. So that's quite useful. Another thing you can do is some, I've seen some instruments and you've probably seen these as well, 
where the user has the option to disable certain round robins that they don't like. So if, if they don't like the third take, for example, they can say, right, I don't want to use the third take. So let's have a look how we can do that. Um, we won't add a user option to do it. We're just going to do it in the script, but you could add an interface to let the user do this. We'll just make an array. We'll call it disabled groups. And again, you'd, you'd make it, you'd add on your interface some way for the user to set these values, but we're just going to say which groups we want to disable. So let's say we don't want group one, and we don't want group three. So then what we can do in our script is we can just skip over those groups. So we can say if what we want to do is see if our array contains the counter. So we can say if disabled RR, is that what we called it? Disable, disable groups. If disabled groups, and there's a great function for arrays called contains, counter, then we just want to increase the counter by one, just to skip over that group. Oh, one last thing we need to do, of course, we need to do the plus one on our counter there. So now when I hit the key it should just play the second group and the fourth group yeah so we're skipping one and three but it should play two and four by fear by fear by fear so that works so that's really nice and we could take take one of these out for example by fear ein by fear so that's a really simple way of just giving a bit more control to to selecting which groups are included in the round robin Okay, so let's get rid of that for now. Just go back to what we had previously. Okay, now we're counting sequentially, but another common technique is to do a random round robin. So rather than it going one, two, three, four, it will pick any of those numbers at random. So let's have a look at how we'll do that. We don't need the counter variable, so we can get rid of that. I'm going to leave it in here because we'll probably use it later on, but for now we can imagine it's not there. So instead of having counter plus one here, we're going to generate a random number between zero and uh, between one and four. So the function for that is math dot rand int, and we give it the value one, and I think we have to give it the value five because I think it's uh, not an inclusive. Uh, number generator. Uh, if we if we get an error, then I know that that's wrong. But I I'm pretty sure it's not inclusive for the upper number. So I'm going to hit a five, and now we're going to hear these samples play back randomly. Okay, that seemed to play them all. So what we can see there is this is totally random. So there was some repetition, you heard um, the same number come up multiple times in a row, and that's what you get with a totally random setup. Now there is a thing called random non-repeating, uh, which isn't truly random, of course, because it's non-repeating, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. It's a bit more complicated. You can do it using loops, but I don't recommend it because uh, you don't really want loops in your real-time callback. I'll be doing another video where I show where to uh, create a random non-repeating round robin without using loops. That'll be posted on Patreon later this month. Okay, so we've seen the basic sequential round robin and we've seen a, a really simple random round robin and there's not much to it as you've seen, it's just a few lines of code here and there, but this is using groups. Now there are other ways to do round robins, they don't have to be mapped to groups. Now if you're using groups for articulations for example, then you don't want to be using them for your round robins. If you've got sustain in one group and a staccato in another group, you, you don't have the groups available to use them for round robins. So let's look at a way we can do this differently. So back in the mapping editor I'm going to take all of these samples and I'm going to put them on round robin group 1 and I'm actually going to just set our number of round robin groups to one as well because we only need one. So we've only got one group. All the samples are still on the same note, so we'll stick with that, that's fine. We're going to use velocity to separate them. So not all of your instruments 
are going to be using the velocity range. Uh, if you've only recorded one dynamic, for example, or, or your dynamics are triggered with a continuous controller rather than using velocity, then your velocity range is free to do with as you please. So we're going to use it for triggering round robin samples. So I'm clicking on the first one here, and I'm going to set that to a low velocity of one and a high velocity of one. Then the second sample I'm going to set to a low velocity of two and a high of two. And the third is going to have a low of three and a high of three. And the fourth, a low of four and a high of four. So there we go. They're all mapped nicely there to those uh, four velocity levels. We don't have a vertical zoom in high, so it's a bit hard to see these, but I have this nifty zooming in feature, so hopefully you can see that. Those are mapped to four different uh, velocity ranges there. So let's go back to our script. We don't need to be fiddling with the active groups anymore. So let's go back to what we had before. We're going to have our counter just counting up sequentially. But again, at this stage, it could be random. It could be sequential. It doesn't matter. So counter equals counter plus one mod um, four. But yeah, you, you could change this to math.rand int if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be this sequential one. But the important thing is we have a variable that has a value between 1 and 4, and that's what we're going to use. Actually, in this case, it's going to be between 0 and 4. Um, again, we need to add the 1 because our velocity uh, range, we, we're using 1 as the lowest. Okay, so this time all we're going to do is we're going to redirect the message's incoming velocity. So we'll have message set velocity, and we'll change that to counter and add one to it. And now if I play the key, we should again hear them counting through. Okay, and I'm just getting silence there. I do need to re-enable the round robin because it's stuck on a previous group. So I'll just re-enable that. Bye. There we go, it's reset now. Okay. So now if I play it, drei, vier, ein, zwei, drei, vier. and I don't know if you can see that, let me zoom in there. You should be able to see it triggering the individual samples. Ein, zwei, drei, vier, ein, zwei, drei, vier. So that's a way to separate your samples with velocity range. We could do it with key range as well. It would be the same thing, but instead of uh, changing the velocity here, we would change the MIDI note number. Okay, so that was an introduction to various round robin techniques. There are other ways that you can do this. If you do have any questions or comments that you want me to go into more detail, let me know. I hope this uh, will give you the gist of how to create your own round robins. It, depending on how you implement this, it can become more complex. But generally, round robin is fairly simple. All you need is a counter and somewhere to apply that counter in a way that triggers specific samples. Okay, as always, thank you for watching. Any questions or comments, please leave them below the video or send me a message on Patreon. And I'll see you next time.